Hello students, Mr. Rowell here again for another quick tutorial for our Computer Programming 11 course. This video is just going to be a quick update on modularity for the piano project. As I've been going around the class, I've been realizing that this is a bit more challenging of a modular jump than maybe I anticipated, and so I'm going to help you out a little bit. I've already helped some students in the class with this particular step, but I want to make sure everyone gets a chance to see this, just so that our understanding can be as tight as possible. There'll be better chances in the future for me to really see you do it on your own. For now, I want to help guide you through at least one or two steps of modular design for our piano creation. So at this point, if you follow my previous videos, you should be able to have a single key functioning and operating in your uh, world with all your code. We're going to leave this alone, the key class. All the code for this should work just fine. What we're worrying about now is the creation of new keys. Now, where you may be at in your project is adding in individual keys. So adding in a new key for each one, maybe the next key on the keyboard, 2b.wave, the next file, then I add this object to my world, key 2, and maybe I want it to be at 200, and at the same vertical height, if you need to see that in more detail. What did I, oh I forgot my, uh, I did not forget that, I let go of the button too soon typing a bit too fast, but you'll see here, if you need to pause the video to see my code, I'll let you do that. Otherwise, my keys are automatically spaced in the way that I've written them here. And now if I press S, I have two separate keys and I've programmed it in by myself. The problem is, is to create all the keys here, I'm going to be typing in a lot of information. This two line set of information, I'm going to be typing in, well, one, one double set for each key. So if I want 20 keys, that's 40 lines of code. There's got to be a way I can make this more modular to make this a lot easier and more organized. I'm going to show you a couple ways we can do this now. First, I'm going to set up my method, public void. Then I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this add key. I want it to have the functionality of adding keys into my world. And now what I need to do to figure out how this can work with modularity, I need to think about what are the patterns of data that I see so far and what I'm doing. I see that I create a new key each time I go through. I also see that then I add this object. So the creation is repeated. The adding is repeated. Any time we see repetition, it's a great chance for modularity. So I'm going to begin with just creating a new key. I want my method to do the work of creating a key. And it's going to simply just create a key. Now, the constructor for the creation of a key, I've defined over in my key class as needing a key name and a sound file. So this also needs to send a key name and a sound file to that constructor when I make the key. But this method doesn't have any information for the key name and the sound file. It needs to prepare to receive the key name as well as the sound file. Okay, that's the things it needs to be able to receive. So that means when I run this method or when I access it, I have to send it this information. So I'm just going to jump up here. And I'm going to say add key. I'm going to run this method right away. And you'll notice that if I just try and add a key, it says the argument list is different length. I actually need to send it this information. So what am I sending it? I'm sending it the information for my first key here. So now this is actually going to add, ex do the exact same process as this here, but it's a little bit shorter. The method takes care of it. All right, so then I can kind of replace this information as well. Rather than have all this typed out, actually for now I'm just going to comment this out to show that we've actually dealt with it somewhere else in our code. I'm going to add key, and then the next one, s and 2b.wave. So now this line here has been covered by our method. Cool, so we've simplified things a little bit, but now we have a new problem coming here, that we no longer have these original objects that we added in the public class, or the, the public information here. So we need to have our method address this add object as well, expand the modular design. So let's have our method add the object. What object? The key that we create right there in the method. Now we need to, need to remember what other information we have here. We have the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. Let's look at the patterns. 
the X coordinate seems to change. Makes sense, each key is further along on the screen on the X domain, but the Y doesn't. So when I'm thinking about defining things, I'm just gonna toss in that consistent height for the Y value where it's added. But something a little bit more complex has to go on here, because let's just think for a sec. If I throw in a number here, uh, 100, what I've done is now every time I make a new key through my method, I'm adding that key to the world. But each key will be added at the same place. I'm going to comment these two add objects out because now we've dealt with this functionality below. Just so we can see it on our screen, I've left it here, but it's not going to affect our program in any way. And you'll see if I click over here, I have one key appearing. But if I click and drag, there's actually two keys there. But when they're created, they're created in the same spot, which isn't very helpful. So I need to expand the logic of this modularity to be able to take into account the changing position of the key. Here's what I'm going to do it in this case. In the future, I want you to try and figure out these steps for yourself, but I'll help you out for now. I'm going to define a new integer, a new number in my program called change, and initially going to set it to zero. We have worked with a variable like this in the past, something that we're going to use to, to try and help us create change in our program. Here's what I'm going to do. I want to add change to my x position. So far, nothing's changed because change is zero. So change, get ready for it, needs to change. Pretty meta, I know. All right, let's see what we need to do with this. This next line I'm adding down here is going to make the difference. I want each new key, let's say to start, to be 80 units further over than the first key. Give it a try to think of what you could put on this line to cause each new key to be 80 units further than the previous one. Hit pause to give it a try, and once you've solved it, or if you're totally stuck, come back and hit play to see the solution. Welcome back. Hopefully you figured it out yourself. If you didn't, no worries. Let me give you a hand here. Here's what I'm going to be doing. Each time this method is accessed, it adds a new key to my world. So each time this code runs, I need to make the change value increase. I'm going to tell change to become something different. It is going to equal itself plus those 80 units I wanted to increase by. Let's make sense of this here. Change, which originally is 0, will now be 0 plus 80, or 80. The first key that's created, change will be 0. It adds the key to the 100 position plus 0. Then it changes the value of change so that when the second key is created, it adds that new key to 100 plus 80. There we go. It automatically creates the key 80 units to the side. Let's see what happens if we add a third key. We're going to add it to the D key on our keyboard. We're going to add the C sounding key. And it's going to create a third key, which should then have this run twice, meaning it should add 160 as the change value. Bam. Automatically for us. Here's why this is super cool. I only have to go to a couple spots to change a lot of information. Maybe, oh, well, this piano starts too far into my screen. The starting point is right here. Let's make that half the size. Shifts everything over. I think the gap is too big. Let's change the number to be a bit of a smaller gap. Hmm, make it even smaller yet. Maybe that's a little bit too tight. I can just play around with these numbers until I'm happy. I think that looks really nice. So by just changing a couple values, I can really customize the visual look, yeah, the visual look of everything on my screen, without having to do editing, you know, every single individual thing inside my main class. I have managed to simplify it and condense it to a simple set of logical procedures in my method. Let me get rid of this old ugly stuff. Now I've been able to add three keys, with only three lines following a really nice modular set of rules in my method. I can add all the keys on my screen in a similar method like so. If you look at the black keys on my module project, they're a little bit more complicated because they're in groups, groupings of three and there's a bit of a bigger gap. You have to be a bit more clever to be able to figure out a great way to modulize, make modular, I'm not even sure if that's a word actually, that information, but it's a worthy challenge for a student of your caliber at this point in the course.
best of luck. Make sure you let me know if you have any questions about how this all works. But continue practicing making your projects modular. Creating this setup is, at this point in time, the most important thing we can be able to do in our coding at this point in time. It's going to save us a lot of grief and make ourselves much better coders in the long run. All the best with it.